Welcome to CAE Pilot Podcast, a podcast that brings together aviation professionals to discuss life as a pilot, training, and career advice. You can find us at cae.com forward slash CAE Pilot dash podcast or subscribe to our show on your audio podcasting platform of choice. You can also find our video podcast on our YouTube channel. So welcome to this episode of the CAE Pilot Podcast. Today we have Susanna Sundberg, um, also known as uh, Susie the Pilot, who is with us today with uh, a bit of an inspirational message, I would say, for, uh, for pilots. Welcome to uh, the podcast, Susanna. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And uh, maybe we'll talk right off the bat about um, the, uh, the video that you posted uh, a while ago on your Instagram. I, I know that it caught the attention of certainly everyone at CAE, um, but uh, just looking at, uh, at the post itself this morning, it's done quite well. And I understand why. The message is, uh, is amazing. So maybe you want to tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it was actually a, a pilot colleague of mine in a, in a pilot community group that we have. And he had this idea that we should uh, uh, have a group of pilots all recorded a short video message with something encouraging to other pilots because we're going through a quite difficult time right now. And uh, he just asked us to record something positive and we put something nice together. So that's what we did, and we, there was actually quite a lot of pilots who, who joined, and I think the result was really good. It was, uh, it was a great video, and uh, what we'll do is we'll put a link to it um, in the description. Um, it's, uh, it's on your Instagram feed as well, so at yeah, Susie, it's on my the Instagram feed. So your message right off the top was to stay current. Um, and uh, I think that's an important one for pilots right now. Why was that the message you wanted to get across? Well, actually, it's yeah, from my own experiences. When I started flying, uh, or I was a student pilot in 2001, and I've been flying commercially since 2007. So I started actually my career with a crisis in 2001, and I lived through all these crises, and I learned that the only thing that got me a job was to keep my license and medical valid, and that I kept on flying doesn't have to be anything super expensive, but I just rented a small plane regularly just to stay current. Because you have to be able to, when they call you and ask, it's never going to be with three months notice. It's going to be on Thursday, they call you and ask, can you come fly on Monday or can you start your training on Monday? So uh, there are a lot of nice inspirational messages to say, but I think mine was a very practical one because I know that this is super important. You cannot tell your employer that I need another four weeks to prepare and they will find somebody else. So you have to be, have to be ready to start basically the same day. And you're right that it's a practical message, but as you say, it's the foundation for everything. If you're sitting around waiting for, not sitting around waiting for a job, but if you're, if you're looking for that role and you're not ready for it, you know, there's a lot of people on the market, unfortunately, right now who, you know, will be able to step in. Uh, yeah, I actually, I had it myself. Uh, I already had a job here at Brussels Airlines and my previous boss, he called me at eight o'clock in the morning on a Thursday uh, or Friday even. And he asked, uh, Susanna, do you know a pilot who would be willing to go to Singapore on Monday to start a typewriting with a base in Sweden and a possible upgrade in nine months? And I thought, ah, oh, okay, who do I know? And I actually knew a guy, and I called him in the morning. I said, yeah, could you do this? Yeah, sure, no problem. And boom, the job was his. It took <laughs> 30 minutes. And, and I think that, that we've, throughout other podcasts, we've heard this um, from, other, from other pilots, and specifically um, uh, a business aviation pilot we spoke to who said, you know, he started, um, there were no jobs for pilots available, so he took a job at an FBO cleaning aircraft. And just because he knew someone or someone came in and said they were looking for a pilot. And so as a cleaner, he moved from that to being a pilot. And I think your example is a good one, too, in that it moves very quickly. If, yeah. if someone is needed, it's, it's today. So I think that's a, that's a great message um, as well. Um, you said that you started during a crisis, obviously the, uh, the financial crisis in 2007, 2008. Um, 
what did you do during that time to, um, I mean, how did you go about finding your job? How did you, you know, you said that you kept on flying and everything, but how did your opportunity come about? Well, I, I started flight school in 2001 and I graduated 2002. And during that time, of course, it was a 9-11 and everything was really standing still. So I just decided I will keep my licenses. I will do my checks every year, the twin engine, the single engine, everything. And I, uh, I tried to fly as much as possible with my friends and family. And I just got other jobs. I worked as a photographer. I was selling newspaper online. I, I, I had a lot of different jobs. And finally, I got a job within an airline as a flight operations at dispatch, and flight planning and crew planning. And I also became a flight instructor at the same school. I did my training. So I could work at the flight ops. I did my flight lessons with my students. And it was actually the, the company I worked at the flight ops for. That's the company I later started flying for. And I had the same situation there. They called me in the middle of the week. As soon as we have an opening on a type rating next week on the Avro, would you be willing to, to start? And of course, I was current, I was ready, and I, I think I did one and a half year at the flight ops, and then I could start flying for them. So for someone who is a pilot today, and they've, they've worked for an airline, um, you know, I feel like sometimes it can be hard to say, I'm going to go do something else, even within an airline. But it sounds like you'd encourage people to do that, I, to yeah. stay within the environment. I do, I do. I think you can, there's a lot of positions within an airline and you just get to know the environment, you get to know a lot of people and it's a perfect way in basically if you can do it. You can also take other jobs but I think the best is to work somewhere in the aviation industry if you can. And has aviation always been a passion for you? A lot of people will talk about the first time they took an airplane or they look up, they we used to see the airplanes flying in the sky and they knew that that's what they wanted to do. <laughs> How did you fall in love with aviation? But I, my story is about the same. I, I don't even know when or how young I was. I think I was just a small kid. As long as I can remember, I've always been fascinated by airplanes and flying and space. And it was just my natural choice when I was around, I think, 17, 18, that, okay, I want to be a pilot. And uh, I cannot explain why. I'm the only pilot in my family. So, uh, <laughs> That's rare. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but it's always been there. And so then you did your training, and now, um, obviously, you've, you've been flying for a number of years. What aircraft do you fly today? Today, I fly Airbus 320. And um, what kind of flying do you do? I fly our uh, medium haul network, so it's Europe, uh, Northern Africa, it's yeah, extended Europe and Northern Africa, so shorter flights, but also longer shorter flights. And during the course of the, uh, uh, the pandemic, have you been flying? What was, how did you sort of, what happened to you during the pandemic, I guess? Well, my last flight was mid-March, and then everything stopped, so I didn't do anything for about four, four and a half months. And I'm just restarting this week. So all my training, my ground courses, my simulator, my first flights, everything is happening this week. So. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's really a, really a busy week. So I'm going to yeah, suggest to you that you look at our podcast from last week because we, um, we did a podcast yeah. on sim anxiety. So all right. Yeah, that's maybe, maybe, that'll be <laughs> that, maybe that'll be useful to you. Um, now, how do you feel about going back? We've seen the world change so much, specifically aviation. So as you go back into it, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm super excited. First of all, I'm so happy I still have my job because we, we also had people having to uh, go on an early retirement, unfortunately. So I'm very happy, first of all, to have a job. And just to see my first flights on my schedule is super exciting. Of course, I have to pass two days in simulator first. but. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. We also changed a lot of procedures now. We, um, the procedure to go to the airplane, we have to go through the airport. There are some different uh, new things I get, have to get used to, but all in all, I'm super happy. And in these procedures, um, is there anything that you see as 
fundamentally changing your job or are they just little little bits and pieces that you know will make you safer in the long run? I think they're just small details for the moment. Uh, I think the change for the cabin crew members are a lot bigger than for the pilots. So um, with a face mask, we have to go through, uh, or at least the, uh, the passengers have to do temperature checks. We cannot have any service on board. But I think all those are quite temporary. I think as soon as we start flying a bit more, maybe we start with the service again. I don't know. But for the moment, it's a bit a, a trial period. And I obviously have many friends who are cabin crew members and the thing that they're finding hardest, and this is funny, is not the mask, is not, you know, here in Canada, they're wearing full uh, uh, tablier, whatever, uh, like a, anyway, yeah, the thing. a gown. <laughs> so yeah. here in Canada, they're wearing a gown and the thing that they're finding hardest is not to be able to do the service that they're used to doing, which is, you know, might surprise people, but uh, that's the thing is, is customer service, I think, in that world is so important. And I think that's, I think you're right. That's where things change. And do you think passengers are ready for um, this new environment? I think so. I think so. Because I already been flying as a passenger to, uh, to Sweden once. And the, the differences for the passengers are not that big, honestly. They are well informed that you have to wear a mask, you have to... Uh, disinfect your hands and there will be no service on board. I think they're very well prepared and you think more than twice these days before you take a flight. So I think they're really flexible and uh, yeah, the differences are not that huge, but maybe on a longer flight, if you do a five or six hour flight, of course, there will be a big difference. You have to bring your own food, for example. Right. <laughs> but uh, for the moment, I think everybody's just very happy that we are allowed to fly again, that you can travel and... Uh, I think everybody's quite flexible. And I think in Europe, you're starting to see that sort of that opening that maybe we're not, we're not as far along in North America as, uh, as in Europe, but I would tend to think that like for me, all I can think about is I need to get away. I need to go somewhere and yeah. I need to go on vacation. And while we're discovering the local area much more, our province and our country much more, it's a lot like, uh, I just want to get on a plane and go to the Caribbean, which is something that, you know, we would do typically. And it's just not yeah. in our realm of possibility for the moment. So, you know, I think passengers will be super thrilled to just be able to go somewhere. I think so. I think so, too. Yeah, I'm just going to deviate here a little bit. You mentioned that you took up photography. And as I was looking at your Instagram feed, um, it's clear that you're quite a good photographer. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, very lifestyle. It's, uh, it's very cool. And I see your little pictures in the background there. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing you highlight a lot on your Instagram is the fact that you're a mom. And yeah, yeah. I think, I um, you know, knowing the, the schedule of a pilot um, and, that, uh, and that your boyfriend is also a pilot, um, talk a little bit about being a mom and being a pilot. Yeah, actually, before I became a mom, we even considered continuing our life without any kids at all because we really liked our lifestyle of being pilots. We like travel or doing sports and uh, having a lot of free time. But uh, in the end, we decided maybe, maybe we should try for one at least. And uh, I don't regret it at all. You just, if you're a pilot or, or cabin crew or whatever, you just need to plan a bit more. You have to have a, a good babysitter or parents or parents-in-law or nanny or au pair because, yeah, you, you know as well the schedule, they can change on a short notice or you can have delays. Uh, so all that you need to have figured out and then it's, it's no problem. I can really, I can recommend it to anybody. It's not difficult. I, I enjoy my time away. If it's not too much, but a few nights away per month, it's, it's nice. I can sleep in. I can <laughs> have an easy <laughs> breakfast without waking up early. And uh, my daughter, or our daughter Olivia, she's super happy when I'm home. And uh, yeah, there's really, it's no problem. So since March, Olivia must be thrilled. <laughs> she is. <laughs> <laughs> she, she had to stay at home for two months as well from daycare, uh, which was amazing. But also it's quite challenging with a two-year-old. Uh, but uh, it was nice. I spent you know, a lot of time with her. 
Yeah, I mean, you know what they say about kids. Every age is the best age. Every yeah. age is the worst age. <laughs> Other words, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, during your time off, what did you find most challenging? Uh, to not knowing what was going on. Um, our airline, it belongs to a big aviation group of other airlines, and uh, we could see the other airlines, our sister companies basically, get state support from their countries and governments, and we got our uh, support yesterday. So we've been waiting this whole time to know we will we get any money from the Belgian state or not, and will we be able to keep our jobs and what will happen if I can keep my job? Will I keep my salary? Will I have to work less or more? Or those things. I try not to think about it too much. I try to enjoy that I could have a regular sleeping pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to see the positive in, in staying at home, actually. But those things are always in the back of your head. Yeah. You, you really don't know what the future is going to bring. So um, now I'm a lot calmer i'm happy i know i can keep my job the future looks quite bright for us so um that was my biggest concern but as i said i really tried not to think about it i tried to just do sports every day spend yeah. a lot of time with my boyfriend and daughter I just try to uh, to enjoy our free time together and so when you get into the flight deck for that first flight <laughs> you know tell me Tell me what that's going to be like for you. Uh, yeah, it will be uh, on Saturday morning, actually, flying to Copenhagen. And uh, I've already gone through that whole procedure several times at home, you know, this dry flying thing. Uh, I think it will be amazing. I'm looking forward to it so much, seriously, just to see the world from above again, just yeah. to be in that environment, to see other people. <laughs> 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 yeah, to, to, to fly an aircraft. It will be amazing, I'm sure. It will be a really, really nice day. Sounds like you're, you're going to uh, rediscover your passion. I can just see I by the that. smile on your face. It's, uh, <laughs> you lit up as soon as you think about it. I think that's, uh, I yeah. think that's great. But the other thing you mentioned there is, you're, you know, you called it dry flying. I would call it mentally preparing for what you, you have to do. What does that look like for you? I know reviewing procedures and everything, but is there, is there any other preparation, any other things that are going through your mind as you get ready? Well, I, I try to put myself yeah, mentally in the situations that could arise and see, am I prepared for this? If, I, if there's something I don't remember, I have my notes from when I did my typewriting. I go back and read through all my notes, my previous checks, my check flights, all the recommendations from my instructors. And uh, I also started during the lockdown to do meditation every day, just for a few minutes, try to clear my head a little bit because it's quite a lot going on. We have so much to think about, so I want to be able to focus again. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to visualize myself flying and all the, the procedures, the SOP, of course, that's a boring yeah. part. You really need to <laughs> look into the books, but yeah. it's a mandatory part. We have to do it. Of course. And, um, and many of your colleagues, <clears throat> many of your colleagues right now are not going to be flying on Saturday. Um, there's also a number of young pilots who started their training or, you know, went to the academy when there was a shortage of pilots. There were certainly not enough pilots. And today we are, you know, arguably in a huge uh, surplus of pilots. What would your message to uh, to to those colleagues and and aspiring pilots be well, yeah, most of the the pilots in flight school right now, I think they should just continue because this industry, you know how it is, it can really change from one year to another, and if they started training now or they might be finished in one or two years, and the industry might look completely different, and they also have to keep in mind maybe that they have to do something else for a few years. As I said, I did something else for five years before I got my first commercial jet job. Uh, so they have to be a bit mentally prepared that maybe it will be a bit difficult, but I wouldn't stop my training. Once you started, just get it, finish it and just stay current and be positive because things always change, always. It's, uh, and also, of course, for those who lose their jobs, that's, for me, a more difficult quest because they're older. 
and it might be more difficult to find a, a permanent job. Maybe in the future, it will be a lot of contracts, shorter contracts to do. But for the students, I think their, their future still look quite bright. And I, how do you stay so positive? Because I'm, I'm, <laughs> looking, I'm looking at you and I'm like, I can't help but you have this energy and like, listen, we're thousands of miles apart. I'm looking at you through a screen here. But I just, you give off this energy of, of just confidence and happiness. And it's very <laughs> nice. It's, no, it's, it's, it's refreshing in a lot of ways because, you know, so often we sit here and we talk about, oh, the pandemic and all the effects it's had. And we fail to see that, you know, to be happy that, you know, you're going flying, to go into training and all of these things that you're talking about, but you still give off this, like, you know, this beautiful energy. And uh, uh, I, think, I, think people, I think people will appreciate it and I'll encourage them to go check out the video. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope so. But yeah, I'm, I'm a positive person. I always try to see the beautiful things, uh, the positive things. Uh, I, life is just easier if you do that. I'm, I'm, maybe I could be sometimes more realistic. I don't know, but uh, I don't think so. I like being positive and I always see opportunities. I always take opportunities if I can. I'm more a, a yes man than a, <laughs> than a no man. And uh, I think that's the most important. If you're too negative, too realistic, maybe, I don't know, it's, it's really not my thing. Sounds like you're saying keep the dream alive. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, one thing I'll mention before we, uh, we drop off is that uh, CAE has launched airside.arrow, um, and that's a pilot community. So there's lots of uh, resources there for pilots. Um, to check out and this podcast uh, that's where this podcast will be um, in about a week from uh, from today um, but I'd like to thank you um, Susanna for taking the time to uh, to join us on uh, the CAE pilot podcast I think uh, you know anybody who's looking for a bit of inspiration check out at Susie the pilot on Instagram the photos will make you mm -hmm. smile if nothing else um, so thank you Susanna really uh, thank you it. very much thank you it's my pleasure and have a safe flight on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care. CAE Pilot Podcast is brought to you by CAE, the global leader in training for the civil aviation, defense and security, and healthcare markets. For more information, check out CAE.com.